Yeah, so how my thing is like you're going to have people who've been around for 5, 10, 15 years sometimes in, in businesses and a lot of times they're going to end up being disgruntled oh, holding sure. grudges against other various employees or oh, the management Kelly or Kelly combs her hair and at the photocopier and it gets full of hair from her hairbrush or mm. you know re- weird little things get into a company and jam the wheels not in this like practical way but because it affects other people's attitudes toward their workplace these little nuisances build up and affect this individual's attitude in this way and that individual's attitude in that way and suddenly you've got people walking around <clears throat> with weird attitudes toward their work environment which cuts into productivity mm-hmm. yeah and the stupidest smallest stuff does it well then it gr- you get enough of those people around and it kind of grandfathers in this sort of abstract misery in the air where it's like new people come in and they're like oh this doesn't feel good yeah (laughs) these people (laughs) don't like each other (laughs) as someone who used to do uh like service on buildings commercial office buildings and businesses you go into some places and you'd feel like this this light productive environment where everyone's doing stuff and they're over there having a coffee having a laugh and this this person's in their cubicle and you can tell they're there most of the time getting it done like it cool good flow light air some places you walk in and you're like oh these people thick. don't like the each other thick. and they're it's just hot and bothered i'm having a hard time being productive around these people there's a like, couple of people out front where i work that if they're working together they will quickly agitate each other, mm-hmm. and then the air in the place is just thick. It's mm-hmm. like heavy. You can yeah. almost feel it. <laughs> like it's like like a layer of like perspiration on you or something. Where it's like, holy shit! Like I gotta get out of this. Like, and then you just you feel toxic. Like until I get out of there and I breathe some air, I'm like, holy shit! What was going on in there? It's like a bad funk or something. Where you're yeah, like, where yeah. is it coming from? But like I've been around it long enough to know what's happened. But like. It puts everyone on edge. Mm-hmm. Like, and everybody knows what's going on, but like, no one wants to say anything about it. And it's just this tense, thick, you could cut it with a knife kind of thing. There's a couple of people that were, where I work that have been around five to 10 years longer than me. Mm-hmm. And those two were are. You at pe- that location? Yeah. Those two Ooh. are people that I look at and go, I never want to end up like that. Yeah, no kidding. And not because of the length of time, but they wear. They wear the amount of time they've been there as like an armor Mm -hmm, and like mm -hmm. it's hardened them because they've never done anything else. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to do anything else. And it's the world's fault that their life is like this. (laughs) Like they're not happy with their jobs. There isn't one day when anything good ever happens. And it's somehow it's the world's fault. Now, I know we're on the topic of... (laughs) maintaining a, a happy, healthy workplace where people <laughs> feel sound like it. motivated and incentivized. You know, we're talking about that. Do you think some of those people will just be like that in almost any role? Unless, you know, of course, they're not saying they're incapable. I'm saying that with their level of personal awareness, pers- personal relationship, self-knowledge, et cetera. I think what they happens... They might be like that in most any position or environment, right? Is you get to a situation like what I'm about to do, mm-hmm. and you don't go for they've, it. Yeah, they've turned down any other opportunities because they're just here. They're comfortable. Their, their contentment and comfort And I don't need the prison. money of this job. Yeah, yeah. I don't need it. There's no monetary reason for me to do what I'm doing. Right, there, right. There, there might be one day... There's mm-hmm. potential, mm-hmm. but right now, looking at it on the surface, that's why I got to do piercing. I'm I'm better suited to doing what I'm doing, and so what I'm saying is, I think these sorts of people, I won't single those two out because this happens all over the place. Mm-hmm. They look at a chance to get out of that and do something they might actually find fulfillment in of some kind, and they go, "Well, this is easy, and I make a ton of money doing it, and I don't mm-hmm. need." And then they let every opportunity pass them by. And then they find themselves 45 years old and rigid and stuck in their ways. And now it's like everyone who's doing something exciting, it's like, well, that must be nice. Mm -hmm. Or like, I have to do... It's like, no, you did that to yourself. You had multiple chances to stop this cycle and you didn't do it. But now it's someone else's fault, right? And they can never take ownership for it because it might be the end of them too. Yeah. Right? It might be too hard to take you've had a thought for a while on this 
Oh, uh, no, I'm doing math in my head, to be honest with you. <laughs> You're trying to figure out whether I'd make more money or... No. Or the, like, <laughs> what? <laughs> the shop. Shop. Yeah. So we were talking about the shop. Yeah. My brain's lost in those those numbers. I get there all the time myself. I do it with my own finances. and Like, like, the, bo- like the bottom line goal? Uh, no, I'm just, like, I like to try and think out things and, like... Um, I'm a big idea of I, I like to try and think out an equation as far as I can take it. And so like my, my brain's just like drifted into the how last far domino. Out you can, how far <laughs> how far out can I think that thing through? Like um because like you know, say say you have an end target in goal. It's like no matter what that target looks like, if there's a route there, can you think of it? You know what I mean? That's kind of where my like yeah, I'm all about visualizing the path to a desired outcome. Yeah. All about it. And and oftentimes, you know, you you trickle your mind down that path and you kind of find the variables that are going to throw off your calculation. Mm-hmm. But you but once you identify those variables, it becomes easier to say, okay, well here's my here are my constants, here are the things that we have to accomplish to make that happen. And the variables which need the most attention, the the factors that are most likely to throw off the plan are mm. A, B, and C. So now I need to, the other things I can kind of like allow them to be a bit more static, but A, B, and C, I really need to turn that dob, knob and see which outcomes I can most likely uh, effectuate and which ones will lead me toward my desired end goal. Yeah, see, yeah. I'll always be accounting for failures in any math I do, where it's like, I'll yep. get, to, say the number is six grand, well, I'm taking a thousand away from that because maybe something goes wrong. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm always rounding down at any end goal that I get to. As you should. You so, to many people, for- so many people round up with everything they do, and it just fucks them. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm, I'm even thinking, like, my own income right now, I, I round down the possible, because I want to be working with lower, and then if I have more, then I have more at the end left over, right? Yeah. I'd rather work with smaller numbers and understand those than the maximum I might get if mm-hmm. everything goes correctly. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, yeah, I find it really hard to talk to people who are always thinking of things going absolutely perfect. Mm. It happens so often, though. <laughs> There's so many of those people who are like, oh, yeah, well, we're just going to do this and this and this and this, and that's going to leave us with this and this and this. So, for example, you will see this if you ever receive a franchise package. So I got a couple franchise packages recently, or in the last six months, let's say, uh, for some businesses. <clears throat> and it is absurd to look at this spreadsheet and go, wait a second, this is assuming that on my Everything second right. month, this business is going to do 270 mobile oil changes. <laughs> like, n- no, that the business is not gonna do that on the second month. There's no way that's gonna happen. And like, oh, this this net value over here, this, this cash flow statement bottom line, somehow that's including on the front page, it showed you got a $15,000 loan from, from over here and a $20,000 loan from here and $10,000 from your personal thing. But now down here, suddenly that loan is worth $30,000. So these numbers are all like, fudged and you won't know it's fudged because all the math works but they've tweaked this they've tweaked that they've ran up the number of actual sales so high to an unrealistic level you know oh yeah this can work potentially and was, anything is possible yeah sure i as a franchise owner can make eighty thousand dollars on this on my second year if i slave for two years straight and get and some luck too all of yeah. these numbers mm-hmm. which in a town a market like lethbridge as we were just discussing this shit ain't no Calgary. Mm-hmm. What I've learned, like, I don't want to take it to this terrain necessarily, but through my social media platform growing is that you have great days, you have horrible days. What really matters is that you play no matter what. Mm-hmm. And right? that you've adjusted your math so that your business still works. Yeah. You don't have a perfect month. But, but like, like, oh, not every month is perfect. What? If, mm-hmm. if you are disciplined and you're willing to go through the shitty times and also understand that the the good times aren't going to last forever mm-hmm. you're going to keep moving forward anyway like things are going to keep getting better anyway because what you've trained isn't your highs and lows you've trained your discipline towards the project right like you're you're goal oriented like i will grow this i don't even know how big it's going to get <laughs> i will grow it mm-hmm. by doing healthy things mm-hmm. that seem good right now not because i want to make nine million dollars today but if i'm making nine dollars today maybe next week i'm making 20 
and next year maybe I'm making 200, right? Like you mm. got to think like s- steps, take steps. And as long as the whole way you're still planning for that, you know, medium case scenario. Yeah. Now when those lean time comes times come in, you have a bit of a buffer because this whole time you've been spending less than you're making or you've been investing intelligently and keeping that buffer. And now you have a thing that can be perpetuated. Yeah, you got to have some safety. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> some structure to it. But that, that's like how I work here. I'm always, I, ha- I have a system where I deposit the money I make from tattooing in the bank, and then a certain percentage of it goes to me. And that percentage is usually much lower than what I could pay myself out of that sum. But that's because I have to, I have to keep extra money in my business slash tax account because at the end of the year, that money needs to go to RSPs, it needs to go toward incidental like tattoo expenses. So I always need to be overpaying that tax account so that it is a business for Buffer when I need to buy a bunch of business stuff, when I need two new tattoo machines, when I'm low on needles, I'm like, you know what, I wanna stock up for four months, let's spend two grand on needles. Yeah. And that's, that's when that money is sitting there for that reason, because I've what I pay myself out of it is less than I can so there's extra sitting there. Well, if you have it, it's pretty proven that people will spend the money if it's just hanging out. That's right. If you if you put it to some use, then it's like, well, it's it's already doing that thing. Life right? lesson one: Ala- learn how to allow money to just fucking sit there for a minute. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With like, don't get me wrong, it is depreciating sitting in that coffee can. But if you keep putting the money in the coffee can instead of spending it on random shit, <laughs> you're gonna have a lot more money. I had a good if paycheck. You spend on random shit. We'll buy some shoes and maybe some pets. It yeah. all the time. Oh, I know. It's constant. And then those people are, man, it would be nice to have some money in my pocket. Oh, yeah. Those are the same people. I don't going, get paid enough. I'm going to go man, yell if, at my boss. If only the government <laughs> would give me some, <laughs> some universal benefits, then I'd finally have money. Hey, I got a question. Yeah. So. One of the things that I think gets uh, like contractors into trouble is having to pay all their taxes at the end of the year if they didn't plan correctly. Well, as soon as you're over thirty grand a quarter, then you have to pay quarterly. Oh. And as soon as you're over thirty grand a month, I, uh, now the, this one I'm not as sure on the number, but I think it's once you're over thirty grand a month, then you're paying monthly. Okay, that was what I was going to ask. Like, yeah. can you pay monthly? Well, it's especially since well, I'm talking. Oh GST man, that would be so much better. Because because. Yeah. Because here's the trick. Because like, what, what's happening? What, what's gonna, happening with a business that so, has an employee and they're paying their taxes? It's very different. So, the business. Yeah, that's a good point. I know nothing. The, so, <laughs> Where does that? <laughs> why does that money not? Yeah, well, no, what th- this is an important question because lots of people who listen to this also don't understand how that works. So, a business pays quite little in taxes. Okay. A. So, let's say that there's a business with five, you know, real life T Ford employees. Right. So people. So. The business earns 10,000 or five employees and his business better, business better earn like, let's say they gross $50,000 a month. Yeah. They paid $15,000 in supplies and merch and crap. And now they're going to pay each of their employees mm-hmm. five grand each. So they take the five grand that goes to, to payroll. Payroll sends some of that money to the employee, put some of that money aside to the healthcare plan, put some of that money, sends it right to the government. I don't know if it sends so it to the government does, or that, it, that was my question. It, 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 it either government? accrues in the business's account, mm-hmm. specially designated for that, mm-hmm. or it goes right to the government. So that's like a foreign employee thing. And so gotcha. all the employees get paid that way. And now there's either an account in the business or it's gone straight to the government that's holding the employee's tax money. Because that's not their money anymore. Mm. They've paid that out. It is now the employee's money yeah. that go that belongs to the government that goes to the government and then can get paid back to the employee. Mm. So then but then at the end of the year, so this whole time they they uh, earned fifty grand that month. So they also paid Five per, or they collected 5% GST on top of all of that. Mm-hmm. So then they subtracted all the money that they spent on GST over that month. So at $15,000 in supplies that they spent, now they get $15,000 worth of GST Back. taken off of the $50,000 GST, and then they submit the rest. Got it. And if they're doing $50 a month, it's probably a monthly submission. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's wild. I don't know so, why I never thought of it before. So a business itself doesn't actually pay a ton of taxes because at the end of the year, even the owners should be paying themselves uh, with a T4. So they will also be getting a paycheck and having that money go to the government each month. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the year, the business only pays taxes on its net net income. 
Right. Yeah. Minus With, your costs. And it's exactly it's net in, income means How after all expenses. How did we come expenses, to such a convoluted system? It's a, this is actually like the simplest portion of it. Things get really convoluted. Oh, I know it gets even yeah, worse. Yeah, the, the, the convolution does start, <laughs> but the convolution starts when you get to the next level. There, there are more and more levels of this. Like there are, there are lots of people out there who have a holding corporation that owns their house and a different corporation that owns their business and then a different corporation that is for their, that they get paid to and then they live off of that corporation. So they have this like holding, holding personal, but their personal business isn't like a, it's not like me as a tattooer where I take money in and I pay money to myself. No, that, that this business actually earns a T4 or be a different form, but still it, it earns uh, a personal income from the other business and then somehow gets divided out from there. And that's common all of this. And that's where we start getting convoluted because it's just a circle jerk to escape the taxes. Mm. I got you. Because corporations only pay 10%. Yeah. So, so what about contractor? Like, so for you. Okay. What are you paying? What are you paying for tax? Uh, so I'm, I'm sole proprietorship, which means every dollar I make is mine personally. And I pay 36% taxes on it. Got it. Yeah. So, so every time I walk across the street and put $3,000 in the bank, $1,000 is four taxes. Mm. And so I need to keep more than that 33%. That is a wildly high amount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, that's, uh, that's the thing. It, it's, it know, is and it isn't. We, we charge lots here, but once you calculate how much you actually made in a day, yeah. you take 40% here and 36% here, mm -hmm. and then supplies and time spent on this and this and this and this, and you break it down. And the hourly that I make for the labor I put into this work is much, much lower than you would think. No, I, I, I yeah. completely agree with that. Yeah. The, the thing that you see all of those steps. Joe Average that has an oh, is an yeah. employee doesn't see all of those steps. No, and so no, what they get, they get told, oh, you make this, and then you get this amount of money, That's which right. equates to a, yeah. a far lower amount of uh, hourly. You hear but, like two hundred dollars an hour for a tattoo artist. It's like holy shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like <laughs> by so the end of like, the week, that was thirty two bucks an hour. Hmm. Um, the exact same amount I make as an electrician. If it's going to work, the math's electric. way wrong on that. But yeah, I know what you mean. Because, like, uh, again, when you're making hourly in a job, that's considering no right. tax. You're right. You're absolutely so like, correct. You're not like working what, on what the that guy is yeah. making. Yeah. Like, so if you're making 20 bucks an hour, yeah. you're only taking home 12. Yeah. And the only reason this year I made less than an electrician was because we had two months off for yeah. lockdown crap. Yeah. But that, that's the thing that a lot of people don't understand about this stuff is, like, you get... Um, we that's, accept that's, a lot. That's why a lot of apprentices rock up and think they're making it. Oh, yeah, yeah, And yeah. they blow all their money, and yeah. you're like, yeah, listen, you're going to want to start paying taxes next yeah, year like, and, and buying better supplies. And they're probably going to audit you. That's going to change a lot. Yeah. It's like... As, I know, your first year or two, you're going to be okay as long as you have some other income. It's one report. of those weird things about, like, so as a cook... I didn't used to get much for tips. These days, the way restaurants work, I make a lot of money in tips. Great, as like you should. Tons now. It's Killer. like two hundred a week. Great. And so the idea of like back in the day, you do your taxes. You'd be like, well, I guess I made a couple hundred dollars in tips this year. Now it's like, oh, I really need to record some of this. Do you have to report them? Well, you have to record something because I'm you? making a like I'm making close to ten grand a year on tips. So I see you have the to say something. I'm going to watch this. So I, I really make 15, 20 a year on tips, and I don't record shit. Yeah, yeah I know you probably should. But you, you have to say a house, something. So you don't really need to. It's a very big well, part that's, of that's my income. Like, who's going to catch? Like, if it's as long right. as you're spending the cash on cash things, you're fine. Technically, you know what I mean. Yeah, but it's not it's not for big ticket items either. It's for you know <laughs> fi firearms and groceries and beer and, and, <laughs> and all stuff. man you know it's so funny cuz like every once in a while you say things that just are so right wing yeah i know <laughs> and you're really so not in like, contrast <laughs> very well, you know cash is meant for a few things 
Firearms, <laughs> groceries, like oh, okay, firearms yeah. are number one. Hey, bro, yeah, like, cash I've got, business. I very much like you using around my personal finances. Like, yeah. at my funny. heart, I'm a fucking conservative. Oh, we I know all you are. Goddamn, no way. Yeah, I know. It's I hilarious. You're the most compassionate conservative I, I've ever met. Exactly. Yeah. I just happen to have you've done the right drugs, done some reading and some drugs, <laughs> yeah. and and you've been around the world. And that's the other that's thing. The, you've been around the world. That's the thing is, I've been in the fucking dirt with the people yeah. who live in the dirt. And that changes your fucking perspective. Of course. Every time someone wa- rocks up and they're like, you'd have to have no heart to be conservative when you're young, and you have to be stupid to, to be uh, liberal when you're old. Mm-hmm. I hear that line and I get fucking pissed yeah. off. But that line. And people that need help. That line ever. comes from people who grew up in a suburb in fucking Calgary. Yeah. Like that line pisses me off. Because, like, no, go over there to some shitty country mm-hmm. that's beautiful and tropical and physically, terrain wise, so much nicer than our own mm-hmm. and see people living in dirt smiling and working as a family yeah. and, and 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 discover this broad range of human experience and you'll learn that the p- people are what matter yeah money is also important and should be run fucking efficiently we need to get the bureaucrats out somehow yeah but burning the system down because we're all mad and fucking self-pitying mm-hmm. is not the goddamn that's, solution that's yeah. Dave is always wanting to burn the system down. Yeah, and that's not productive nowadays. There's 7 billion people. <laughs> yeah. If you burn the system down, millions of people will fucking starve to death. Get rid like of that the top. is how war fucking works. Because that's his answer to all the uh, fighting on the bottom. It's like, we shouldn't be fighting with one another. We need to we need to join together and overthrow the government. It's like, And then all starve to death. And then, like, and then also come to the same conclusion again. Yeah, and, and then have a vote <laughs> and do the same crap all we over again. Get well, some different guys in there, but the, they'll be the same guys the difficulty is is that there's a there's a whole swath of people that want to end the game and don't want to play the game yeah like politics in general any but anything they that don't you know want how to, to farm nor do they have access to yeah. land what, what are we gonna do with what all I'm that in, is, infrastructure what i'm saying is <laughs> if, fuck it who if cares a dave, <laughs> revolution if there's a dave out there or if there's people that are kind of like a burn the establishment thing <laughs> i mean there's millions of them out there right now it would be really moment, protesting it would oh, be really goodness. wise to put yourself within that system and try and make make active change within it because yeah play the, the game from the inside first nations guy running for mayor this last round yeah yeah but he had know. a bunch of disgruntled comments on social media yeah, so yeah, no, it didn't I, go so I, well I for him i actually didn't vote for him i wanted no, i'm to. not saying anything. i, like, I don't bro, know what's this guy up to tell me he's i don't know guy, about the quality please. of his character i just remember how his campaign ended it was well it didn't end but ended mm. yeah. um was a bunch of crazy comments on social media. Mm. Well, like, I mean, I, I understand the, the notion in terms of like, oh, I hope, but like eventually, I hope that we'll get through enough um, addressing of social issue so we can actually uh, vote with competence rather than rather than image our, currently. Our hearts. Image is really like a We've weird way to... we come back to the same thing that we come back to often the now. The televangelists. <laughs> yeah, Do really. <laughs> better research let's build a culture yeah. where we do better research in making important decisions like placing our ballot but like to yeah. contrast yeah. that if, if a lot of people it had voted different. for yep. this guy just because like you said he was uh he was well we yeah. did the, we did the research right and it turns so he out wasn't the right candidate yeah and in a, in with with hagen going hard this last election kind of had to do more of a strategic vote there yeah well i knew he was gonna you know what sucked Hmm. I couldn't vote. Really? I really? was quarantining. Oh, fucking lame. That was when uh, my roommate had COVID, yeah, so yeah. I was stuck in the house. Huh. It was just lame. one of those, like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. Like, what God are the damn. odds? This would have been a good one to vote. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't but, normally care that much, but I didn't like Chris Spearman, so. Yeah. <laughs> How long was he in office? Like, 20 years? Yeah. <laughs> he was not good. He had a very bad public face. Well, he was walking think- around downtown talking to himself for a lot of it. He frequently told people if they didn't like the way things were going, they could leave. Yep. I only met him one time, <laughs> and it's when he rolled into the slice with a bunch of other uh, Albertan mayors. Mm-hmm. Uh, with it wearing a tie in his head and a Rolling Stones tie dye shirt, and he got up on speech and he got up on stage and made a fucking drunk speech. Yeah, he looked like a big drinker awesome, to me. <laughs> that's <laughs> he had that yeah, beet red drunk face, awesome. like it's the insane. big red nose, and yeah. like yeah, he looked like a proper drunk to me. Yeah, it doesn't that's speak pretty awesome. For competence, no, but I was. <laughs> that has nothing to be. It has time. nothing to do with being a good mayor, but. But kind of like with the Tom and Doug Ford, you know what I mean? Where it's just oh like, yeah, like you know they, they're, they're like. Just a, 
Trump-esque characters. Yeah, it's like they're not not mayoral quality in my opinion, <laughs> but you know the drunk guy at a wedding making a yep. ridiculous speech that everybody laughs at. Yeah, Very entertaining. But again, not 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 a governance. Yeah, you kind want of. that guy to give a speech at a wedding, not yeah. run the. City. Yeah, that's the drunk uncle <laughs> at a wedding. I'm excited that forever I have the story of the mayor of the t- city I'm living in rolling into the bar I'm casually hanging out at to give a speech and watch a show. Yeah. yeah I like rolling that. in with all the other mayors from Alberta. Yeah, I really do like that. Yeah. Like, Again, I it's not good, but I, good, it's <laughs> it's but fun. I like it. Yeah. So what would <laughs> like be good? Yeah, I know. Jeez. Like, what would be good? What's a better case scenario for a mayor? Um, wisdom. Mm. This This new mayor. Patience is well connected in town which can be good and can go forward but from what i've read he's got some pretty wild ideas that i don't think are going to ride in council and it's just i don't don't think this is going to be a time of forward progress for us probably not uh but whatever yeah he was uh controversial when he was just on the the board anyway right he's already a controversial council member he was shutting everything down already and now it's like Okay, everyone's been shutting your ideas down forever. You've got a ton of public support, but your ideas are all a little bit hardcore for our sleepy ass town with its yeah. long term. Do you think there's really any way to issues. wake this city up a bit? Because when you say this sleepy ass town, I completely understand right. what you, you mean. Know exactly what I'm well, talking like about. Like Sarah and I went to the mall the other day and I was just like looking at the people. And I'm not trying to like, I'm, I know I'm not a gorgeous human being myself, but like everyone has just given up. Yeah. Like, it's well, just got this vibe of, like, life ended in 1993. That was the last time we bought anything new. Have you ever been to a place where um, <laughs> beautiful people go? Uh, like, have you ever been to LA? Niagara Falls? Or, like, like I went I to Nashville. Six months in Byron Bay. Yeah. Like, when you have a place that's a destination, and the people that want to leave their sleepy-ass town want to go there, that's the only way to do it. Yeah, I like, mean... I, unless this place is a destination. Well, like, a, I've, hey, I've, escape the rest of the Alberta You see, like, here. people you went to school with. Yeah. And it's like, holy shit, you look like you're 50. Yeah. And it's not like... Yeah, people like they just gave up. Here, it's not like Silver Fox 50 either. Yeah, no, it's no. bad. It's very bad. No, it's, it's like Smoker 50. Holy shit. Like, so, big beer guts and fucking bucket clothing and... Yeah. Like, I, do, I do have some thoughts on this because part of the reason that this town is so stuck the way it is is because it is nice. It's a great little city. This is a fantastic little city. It's the right size for me. It's got lots of amenities. It's super work for me. It's close enough to the mountains to do the shit I like to do. Good town. Good fucking little city. But the, the downtown life is crap. Yep. Partially oh, yeah. because it's been crawling with homeless folk for years. Yeah. Houseless, what do you call them these like, days? I'm not saying this say unempathetically. That, everybody's going to say the same thing, which is like, every place has a homeless problem. No. no this, ours, like this. Is ours is exceptionally large. Yes. And it's crazy, and it's been going on for long enough that every a lot of people are literally scared yeah. to be downtown. Like uh, openly, yeah, me included, man. A lot like, of at the end of the people. night, at 6 p.m., I have to run cash across the street. Yeah. I fucking hate it every time. Yeah. Every time. I hate it. Mm -hmm. And this is me. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think anything's really going to happen to me, but I don't like it. It's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And, like, I would far rather leave the cashier and do it in the morning when the sun's out. Is there a way you can do that? Like, you do it at the start of the day? It's not safe to leave the cashier. Yeah, that's a good point. That's the reason that I want to deposit it at night, because we are downtown, and there are break-ins around our downtown all the time. Mm -hmm. So if I leave a few thousand dollars in here... And then shame on me for them getting it. Or I can just You get broken take into the, every week then. Yeah. Yeah. All so of a sudden I mean? you're a pigeon. Yeah. Death, death blow two. Death blow two. Because of this kind of attitude, this sleepy tan, we have a very indoorsy vibe here, right? Yeah. We've got this very indoorsy vibe. So everyone hooks up and fucking marries up and has some kids. <laughs> they this vanish. Yeah, this is so vanish, boring. Yeah. This is a family-ass, yeah. boring-ass town where yep. people like to live quiet, sleepy lives, yep. and it works for them. Oh, and, dude. I, and to get out of that, we kind of need to build something here yep. that gets people awake and going so that there's an alternative to just staying at home with What the kids. would you build? 
What's a good idea? Oh no, you, you like we're doing it right now actively. Like third, oh, fourth fucking plaza or whatever. Fourth Ave turned into a plaza. That's actually the right step. I've been I've been to a lot of <clears throat> cities that have outdoor life. Unfortunately, the weather is our biggest obstacle. The weather and people feeling safe. People, you exactly. know what I mean? Like, but, like that, you have the watch. That plaza. <laughs> let's not even <laughs> get me started. The fuck, man. Watch. Anyway. <laughs> what about the Sage Clan? Have you seen those guys? No. I have not. Okay. Are they going around they, saging people? Well, what they do is they have <laughs> wagons full of goods that they distribute. <sighs> Thank God. Yeah, like Cokes Wait, and are chips they covered and in packaging? You can litter on the ground? No. So yes, they are. They're, oh, good. they're like, yeah, they're like. They're in um, paper bags because you might as well make the place. I don't know who worse. pays for understand. them, but they wander around the city and give uh, uh, all of the local people gifts of chips and pop and I mean not not necessities we, like like nice treats and stuff. We got to keep them fed at least. Oh, I know. It's let's, just let's no, do there's, it. There's there's like again. <laughs> I we are in between a rock and a hard place. We're between an empathetic city and a heartless city. But some people, <laughs> I know but it's really right weird. Between but it. some people also feed the pigeons. And then an exterminator has to come yeah. kill the pigeons. It's like yeah. putting bread out for pigeons. Yeah, yeah. You're. It's gonna be a weird time. Yeah, like it's it's um, it's it's like you don't want the problem, but you're you're want you're wanting the you're encouraging the problem too, right? Mm -hmm. We have well, a lot going into keeping the problem going. We have we only address it within the the avenue that feels most socially okay to do so. Yeah, because we're not able to intervene um, on a mental health level at all. Yeah. Mental health here is entirely, um, well, almost entirely self-determined. We're not allowed to do anything about it, so we're just trying to like make them comfortable. Well, because it seems, uh, again, this is where it's socially unkind to talk about it from a mental health standpoint in terms of removing someone's agency because they are a danger to themselves. Yeah, yeah. So, like, consistent needle drug use is, I, in my opinion, considered dangerous to yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? If it's you're not, passing out in an alley. You're gone from, that's not freedom of expression yeah. anymore. That's mutilation. Like, yesterday, as I'm driving away, there's a gentleman sprawled out on the ground with his things strewn about him, unconscious, in the middle of an alley. That's not safe on a five for him. On a five-degree day with 50-kilometer-an-hour winds. Yes. None of this is safe. And he, like, he if, could get hypothermia and die is, there. In my opinion, that is a tempted suicide. Yeah. Well, and it is, though. Yes. I, I've, I've known if paramedics who have told me and doesn't see him, they'll bring them back to life, yes. and they're angry when they're back up. They're well, like, yeah. why did you? Now, to be I've fair, it's a really bad feeling for to, to come I out of that. I couldn't even comment. I've yeah. heard that story a lot of times, and I, but I've never witnessed it personally. I, I haven't either. One of I'm Rick's just... clients, one of Rick's clients is an, is, was an EMT at the safe injection yeah. site, and he said he brought a guy back five times in one day. Five yeah. times in yeah. one day. Well, they take too much. They don't want to get up. Some of them. No, I'm not saying all of them. Well, but. that's the hard thing, right? Because you give them Narcan, and it immediately cancels out everything in their system, so they feel unbelievably uncomfortable. They're essentially having a panic attack. And that probably and robbed, like they're, they're, too. Like, it's probably like, I worked hard to get that fix. Uh, I think it's more <laughs> just... I a, bet they're pissed to drive. Well, well how hard do I they have to get to fire, pay man. for it, though, right? Yeah, like, yeah. like, work. But you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like they, they probably hustle all day to get that, and yeah. then it's, it's taken, taken away from them. Yeah. Room. Like that and must they didn't feel choose for it to get taken exactly. away. Exactly. They've been walking. They've been walking around town, <laughs> selling their self-respect for a dollar at a time, to save up twenty bucks to get that. Yep. That hit. Yeah. It sounds. It sounds silly, but I honestly think they probably feel robbed. I hope we're. I, I hope we're yeah. they in this case isn't derogatory. No, I don't think. No, that's well, anyone can't. that's in that situation. It's yeah. anyone. And, not, and this is that's the other problem. Clear, we're not talking about any specific demographic no. besides those. I'm who talking are. about it's this anyone demographic. That's within that anyone situation. who's yeah. in this situation. Like, I've 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 watched Dr. Drew talk about this a lot because he's a big voice in LA on this, trying to get them to change their opinion. Because we should listen to some Dr. Drew today. Oh my God, he's the best. Dr. Drew's um, dead right on. But. So, like, one of the things that he was talking about is when you're in the midst of that type of drug addiction, you get to a place where you can't see it. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a type of neuropathy that you get into. I can't remember the name of it because I don't remember things like that. Um, but basically, your addiction has pushed you so far that you're unable to see the fact that you're in it. You can't see the situation that you're around. And he said a majority of people that get clean and fully clean are angry that people let them get there. Literally angry. I'm sure that they this was allowed. Why did no to them one tell me? Because it seems cruel. 
That's like, how that's I felt when I gained weight. <laughs> it's like, why didn't anyone tell me I was getting this way? Yeah, like I wish someone had a told. Like I'm sure it's way worse than that. Yeah, but like it's people should tell you when you need help. But holding people against their will is such a weird time. Mm. Why? Well, it's just you have to establish. Uh, you have to that. encourage well, you, them you have to, to want humane it. Humane moral criteria to so you have a sound reason to hold any one individual, right? Like an individual needs to hit. Uh, a certain criteria that needs to be very well researched and studied, right? Because if you if you it have is the wrong, though. yeah, oh, of course, yeah. Oh, no, I'm I'm just preaching that. Yeah, I'm just saying that we're at, that if we're going to sit here and advocate for this, let's talk about how it's a complicated system that needs yeah. checks and balances. Yeah, yeah. I, but like the difficulty is, is that I think a lot of the times we end up looking to people that aren't. Um, like my question would be. If you're gaining information, you should also be gaining anecdotal information for those who have been in it and then out of it. Have and a get chat their with an actual person, please. Get their, thou- get their thoughts on the matter because like, if they've experienced living within it and then moving out of it, what was the route that helped them? You know what I mean? Like, because a lot uh, of... But by the time, sometimes by the time you've gone through so much shit, you're so jaded and callous that it's hard to give back. Let me... Uh, no, I'm not, not even saying that they have to be the ones giving back, but just to inform... To instruct those. Yeah. Let me create, yeah. let, let me well, create an example here. I, I, sorry, I, as I'm saying this, I'm realizing that's what our university is studying currently. Cool. Yeah, I, I talked to a girl who's in the study. Uh, like, she's a part of the, the research team. And I, I just realized we are act- actively doing that. And our city has hired the U of L to oh, do Oh, yeah, that. like, we have, we have a major addiction unit. So, yeah. so, so Danica, the chick I tattooed last Thursday when I had a cancellation, uh, yeah. she has actively been running rat lab trials on gambling addiction for years now. Yeah, yeah. Like, when I, when I first met her two, three, three years ago now, I met Danica. And she was just about to start her first rat experiment on gambling addiction. Yeah. Yeah. And it's happening over just, just across the river there every day. This is, again, my, like, psychedelics. I just, uh, you know, like... <laughs> this time reluctantly. For me, it just is, like, I, I see the pain. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. It, it just... Uh, there was a guy that came in here the other day and, you know, obviously dealing with his drug issue. But he just wanted to show me his tattoos that he got in prison. And he just wanted to be in a tattoo shop talking about tattoos, but physically he's so debilitated. Like did his you, back did you do was the walker. No, no. Because um, I had that happen to me like maybe a month ago now. Yeah, to a bunch of different guy though. Uh, I mean, he I, I'm, he could use a walker to be honest with you. His mm-hmm. he, his whole skeletal structure is really compromised now, mm-hmm. and it's just one of those like I can see pain all over this man, and I'm just like fuck, man. Yep. I wish we could do that. I wish we could do something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like. Because it, it just seems like hell. You know what I mean? But what would what could you do? He's I don't know. Like you, you would have to detain him, right? <laughs> but if, there, there's no because there's, there's nothing physical you could do. You just have to encourage it. Well, that's the difficulty. That's what we're running into, right? Because detaining seems inhumane. And yeah, I, exactly. I can understand that feeling, especially if there's sound of mind. Well, like but again, you, the active choice of destroying oneself. Uh, this is one of the things that. So I've had a number of situations happen where I've had to be in extreme situations of per- person harming themselves and me having to call ambulances. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So my dealings with the doctors are a little bit jaded in that respect because every time I've talked to them, my argument has been the act of self-harm is a, it would be a, I could consider that an, um, not in one's sound mind. Mm-hmm. Acting against one's life is you are not with yourself at that point, in yeah, my yeah. opinion. Like that, you've you've been pushed to a place where you don't see the world anymore. Yeah, you're your own enemy. Yeah. Right? So, if we could categorize it that way, then all of a sudden we might look at it a little bit differently. You know what I mean? If you're constantly trying to destroy yourself, um, how how long in, until you can look at that as like no, no, that's that's long form suicide. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and I don't know. I just wish we could help people. It just, it breaks my well, heart. Well, if you could see it that way, it's almost to the point of there's easier, cleaner ways to do this. Yeah. Right? Some people don't want to live. That's yeah. another thing that we should grapple with is that some people really don't want to be here and they've been around long enough to know that this isn't a phase, right? Like they're, but they can't go. We won't let them go. It's not mm-hmm. easy to go. Like it's very difficult to actually take your own life for all kinds of reasons. Like, 
try and drown yourself, your body fights against you, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But that happens mentally too. Yeah. Like you try and hang yourself, you try to get out of it, right? You're you're gonna all of a sudden change your mind. Oh yeah, your like your lizard brain is gonna f- exactly fight out of the death throes. My my dad do. figured it out in the end, but it took him like six or seven different tries throughout Oof. his life. So he Oof. was campaigning for that his whole life. Man. Now wouldn't it have been easier if there was just a way that? Well, I mean, Switzerland has that thing now. Yeah, I don't know what the criteria would be though. Well, it usually has to be like your, your end of life. You know what I mean? Like the fact that you're living is in more pain than not so some so, but some people are mentally there yeah right not physically see we see that physically when people are like physically in a lot of pain it's like oh just put them out of their misery we don't see that same thing mentally and that happens more often than not mm-hmm. mentally mm-hmm. Like there are times when it's like someone's in so much mental agony you, you can't see any of it mm-hmm. so what's the criteria for well, uh, optional suicide type thing. I mean, the Legal difficulty euthanasia. is we don't have we don't have a good intervention currently for um, strictly mental issue. You know what I mean? Like uh, extreme depression, we don't have a very good answer to right now, and, legally. And, and our society is so unable to come to terms with death. Yeah, like there's yeah. there's something with this yeah, weird really Christian are. culture we've developed where. A lot of our population thinks we're all going to heaven and still doesn't think that letting one person die is is reasonable in any circumstances. Yep. When, you know what, actually not everyone's consciousness is the same as yours. Some people have had a much crappier consciousness and are having a much worse time finding their way through this. And if they're looking for that release their life is different than yours Mm -hmm. it is weighted differently in their own eyes and yes it'd be great to find them help that's not an easy question to tackle no and it's different for everybody unfortunately but that i think the one of the other reasons that a program like that is hard to bring in especially when it comes to young people who are younger people who are physically healthy is because these are the kind of programs I was was reading, I was doing some reading last night actually on the, on the history of vaccines and why vaccine hesitancy hesitancy exists. And one of, one of the big ones is that any government program can get abused. Oh yeah. 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 Like there. Yeah. This would be a hard one because like who's gating it? Like, what's the criteria? Because all of a sudden people are trying to, it's like when you go to the doctor and you tell them the right things to get a diagnosis. And what's stopping that new mayor from using it to exterminate the homeless? Yeah, I I could see you weaponizing There's been a lot of crazy stuff happen in our history and a new mayor using a euthanasia sub rule to exterminate Mm -hmm. 50, 60 homeless in our city. Because I mean, Would, when you could say fucking the, happen. exterminate yeah. is the right word, but it's not the right word. Ex- so like, yes, you're it right. would be in a form of but, extermination, but, but you'd be coaching thin- them into yeah, it, or you, you coerce them into yeah, exactly. Asia, and on paper, everything looks pretty. Oh, these people all yeah, just see we're done mean. with life. Wasn't there, Here we wasn't go. there uh, something like that 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 like I think there was happened back in like the 60s, 70s. But I don't remember where. I think I think it was New York. I, I, this like does ring a bell. And then all of a sudden, there was no more homeless problem, and they never had an answer as so to why when they, they busted they, to California or whatever. Uh, well, no, there was that, which happened later. Yeah. Like that well, was in here. That too. was Giuliani, wasn't it? Giuliani took tickets? care of crime. Yeah. Yeah. He was big on cleaning up crime. But there, in like the 60s and 70s in New York, there was like, there was an avid homeless problem, and then there wasn't. And I, I, I can't remember what the, what the, uh, someone listening to this was. will probably know. Oh, more than likely, yeah. <laughs> Because I definitely Please leave your answer in the comments. Yeah, but I it's those. Don't. You're right. Like the problem is, anything can seem fine on the outside, uh, on the onset, and then all of a sudden it gets used by someone who doesn't have pure motive, and therefore it gets bad. Like we we have a real issue with that when it comes to anything. Like use and misuse uh, is is Super something common. that, and it's it's something that like you can make the argument either direction. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like if someone is uh, intent, if someone is has seen a lot of it, a lot of misuse, they're going to be immediately leaning over to the idea that misuse will be the the result. Yeah, prevalent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, where, like, but that's not always the case. Like a lot of, there's a lot of people that don't like, I've seen a a lot of misuse and I don't jump to mistrusting it immediately, but I do consider it a factor that it could be possibly a thing. Do you think that, um, 
this drug ec- epidemic that we have in this city and that's happening in other cities, obviously, too, um, slows down the progress of some good drugs? <laughs> yeah. Um, Big yes. time. Well, but, but on the, it's a good question because right now we are pursuing some drugs. Mm-hmm. Would, but if we didn't have this pandemic, or not pandemic, epidemic of drug use um, that's plaguing us currently, I think that we would be making faster steps. Uh, yeah. I, I actually think it's accelerated. Hmm. You think? Research on it. Yeah. Like we have different substances because the, the, the buzzword that is bad is opioids, right? So yeah. not a whole hell of a lot of research is going into opioids right now. But um, drugs to help with that are getting fast tracked. So like Ibogaine is getting fast tracked for that because it helps with it. Chronic entire, pain, for example. Well, it entirely alleviates any, any um, dependency on a physical substance. It just removes it. So if all of a sudden you have this thing that's a wild ass psychedelic that would never be on the table normally, but it has this intervention potentially for this real big problem that we've created, all of a sudden something that would be never on the table for years and years and years is getting studied by the world. Imagine we somehow fast tracked also this, you know, the, the thing we're kind of talking about, you know, like a short term incarceration of those who can't self advocate, right? Is kind of what we've been discussing here mm-hmm. today, uh, or for the last 10 minutes anyway. So suppose you had a system of, you know, a moral, a moral and ethical as much as it can be system mm. where you do incarcerate those who can't self advocate due to drugs, mental health and destitute poverty. Mm-hmm. Right. Suppose you, you create a, you create a thing for that that has some checks and balances so it doesn't, you know, go off the rails and end up fucking people over. And then there was an option for psilocybin or ibogaine therapy once inside with a counselor who helps you kick opioids via those trips. Well, I think like when you have a system that's built like that, when you have clinics and things that are Mm -hmm. like that, um, it will start to trickle in people that have used it and had a good encounter with it. Mm -hmm. So I think it'll happen naturally, even if we don't go the route of detaining people. Yeah, yeah. Like I think just having option um, where right now there is none. No. You know what I mean? It's either you get off of it yourself. Well, the trick is you to, to, to have a successful Ibocaine or psilocybin experience where you break an addiction, I believe you would first have to detox fully. You know, you kind of have to no. submit to a week or two. Not Ibogaine. Uh, but with Ibogaine, man, you get into it, you're still going to have all this physical dependency for the nope. next week or two. Nope. Really? How so? I began entirely I'm asking because I don't know. I began yeah, same, same. one of the <laughs> I'm skeptical. Of it. Okay, so one of the th- this has been used in Africa for forever for opioids. Okay, well here I'm gonna do some research while you yeah talk go for and it. Back you up so a little bit. So the I began HCL basically one of the things that it seems to be magical at doing is those depressed neurotransmitters that are dependent on things. So like you have an opiate receptor, right? And when you have uh, continued use of opiate, decept- uh, opiate use, um, it keeps depressing that receptor over and over and over again to a place where it's now uh, dependent on that thing being there. Otherwise, what you end up getting is you get a resurgence of that feeling and it gets way worse than whatever it was originally. So it's the same problem with people using um, any, anything chronically. So if you, if you use I- ibuprofen chronically, so you use 400 yeah, milligrams. Diminishing returns. No, no. It creates the issue you were trying to treat. Mm. So um, because of this dependence thing, so like if you if you were to take something statically just once, it has the depression and release. Whereas if you continue to press it, that button gets held down over and over and over again. So your natural state is now way amplified when you're when you don't have the substance. So like withdrawing from heroin or opioids and things like that, you get this reaction of, you know, your bl- your skin's on fire. You're in immense amount of pain, and that pain isn't real, necessarily. It's more. It's exacerbated by the lack of this drug. Yeah. So one of the beautiful things about ibogaine that they don't really understand yet, but they're trying to isolate so you don't have to do this crazy ass trip is the fact that it will immediately reset those reset those neural uh, neural receptors so you do not have physical dependency so without the physical pain it's just a mental dependency yes. you're trying to beat which uh, is uh, unless you have existing damage that you were trying to treat previously arguably the harder part to do yes like cuz you can say that um, smoking pot is addictive yeah. physically but it certainly is habit forming yes of course right? anything is so 
I mean, I'm not taking away from this drug, but I'm saying still you need to break the connections to the life part yeah. of it, right? Yeah, the, so it would be a static intervention to <clears throat> save you from the uh, physical push yeah. to something. And then you'd be able to potentially go into therapy to deal with the rest of it. Yeah. Because, like, eh, there's... There's a really tough thing, and this is one of the reasons that the opioid crisis is such a dangerous thing, is that your body gets dependent on this chemical, and the recovery from that chemical being out of you is very hard. So if, if you didn't already have a mental push to using that thing, you have another physical push that's exceptionally more powerful. So one of the beautiful things about Ibogaine, if we can get it to a place where you don't have to go on a crazy ass trip for 72 hours. Um, I see other potential well, results. Actually this, this article says that the euphoric, uh, visual phase is one to four hours <laughs> and that the introspective phase comes after that. Um, it, I, I'm sure it depends on the dose. I'm but sure there's like, gotta be a lot of variation there, but I've watched a number of like people actively engaging in Ibogaine and it's days. So mm -hmm. I, I see another potential thing that could happen in um, some fusion of this with um, a fentanyl or a heroin where it's almost recreational use and you don't get the uh, dependency so anymore. Ibogaine apparently is the one that is you're in no, uh, they call it the Mount Everest of psychedelic. Mm -hmm. So I, I doubt you're going to want to do this more than once. So no, no. So what I mean is you're they're trying to diffuse that part of it. Oh, I right? see. Yeah. So if you were to put the part of it that keeps the dependency off mm -hmm. um, or the depend like the the body pain away and then you could take um, a heroin or a, a fentanyl with this part of it, the part that keeps you from feeling the withdrawals, you could have almost like a recreational one use uh, heroin. But I mean, technically, yeah, <laughs> but it, it would actually be one of those things that like, um, so right now, if you're trying to step down off drugs in any capacity, so this would be a similar thing with like, potentially there, again, there's no research in this area, but when you, when you take a, like an SSRI or something like that, or Ativan or any, any of those types of things, your body gets the same dependency, right? Like it, it's different in terms of what it's depressing, but you like, I went off uh, um, I went off an SSRI very aggressively and it was very foolish. Um, hey, Allie, can you grab the door? Um, and my like withdrawal from it was hellish. Um, it was all mental for the most part, but it was stupid and I shouldn't have done it. I should have stepped down. But the theory being if, if they can synthesize a version of Ibogaine that you wouldn't have that uh, psychedelic experience, Anytime you're going to switch any medication, you'd be given this thing. It will help mitigate for any physical any, dependency. Any withdrawal symptoms. Uh, again, there's no research on those things, but hopefully that would be an end result. Mm. That would certainly make it better.